Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. And today I'll be doing a video on this list booting of Windows. Uh, especially I'll be showing you how to install Windows to image in CC boot directly instead of using USB to install the Windows to SSD and then create an image and upload it to the server. So this process will be much faster and will save you a lot of time. So Let's get started. We'll need some. We'll need an additional program called Simple STT Server. You can find it here in the GitHub page. Release. Download the .exe, which is for Windows. And after you have downloaded it, copy it to C C put folder and rename it. Uh, I renamed it as STT Server. And open a terminal and run this command. And I'm using the TFTP folder, this folder as the root folder for that STP server. So I'm going to start that STP server now. Now we need a few more files. I've already downloaded the files here. Uh, this chip has all the files that we need for this. And you can download it from the link in the video description below. And let me extract it. Extract all. So once you have extracted this, you have to move it to the TFTP folder. Okay, so in the CC boot TFTP folder, paste it here. And all of the files are here. So now the next thing would be to start the CC boot server. I've stopped it for now. So let me start it. I'm using CC boot 2019, but uh, these files can also work in 2018. Uh, additionally, these files are digitally signed. So this can work in UFR PXM mode as well. Uh, you can find these files in my Patreon page. And I have multiple files here. Uh, this one will be using this ipx efi for installing the Windows to the CCBoot image, while the others are used for booting into secure mode, sorry, secure boot uh, UEFI or in legacy bias. So this one will be used for installing the Windows and legacy bias, while this one will be used for installing the Windows and UEFI bias. And for computer, I'm going to be using a Hyper-V machine, but uh, this will work with physical machine as well. So let's get started after starting the sysboot client. Let me start the Hyper-V so that it gets detected here. Now you can see here, let me change the PX option and DLC on the PFI. Click OK, option, and click OK once more. Uh, don't worry about this error, it will go away in a bit. Uh, after this, uh, we have to add an image and we'll be creating that in Dix Manager. We'll be creating a blank image to use for installing the Windows. So let me create it. Open the Dix Manager action and then create PSD. Browse for the location. I'm going to create the D drive. Okay, so that's the name. I'm going to give it a 50 GB file size and it will be dynamic. Click OK. Now it has created the uh, VSD and mounted it. I'm going to keep it as the VSD because I'm going to add it in the CC boot. Click Add Image, Browse, choose the UFI, and click OK. Now it has been added here. You can see 50 GB. Now the image is also assigned. Now I we have to put the client in sub client mode. Choose the image and click OK. Now let's restart the machine or computer and you'll we'll see we're taking the IP from CC boot and putting the IPC file. Now this menu comes from this default IPFC uh, file and if you edit in a notepad you'll see the menu here and you'll notice that we have this section here 
and everything is coming from root url that is stb server root folder that means tftp root folder here and i've added some files here uh, this will be included in the zip file so you can uh, use these files or you can source your own files this bootwing is uh, winpe mm. so th this bootwing is from winpe so you can create your own or you can download from your uh, internet also so the first menu will try to boot from the boot os from the cc boot uh, the assigned image but it's going to fail because the image does not have anything so let me uh, reboot the computer with reboot command now it's going to take the ip again and open the menu now the second menu install windows to support image and uh, there's some back there must set client to support client first as i said earlier now click on install and you'll see that it loads the files from this boot folder and loads the winpe so let's switch for a bit and then uh, proceed to the next one now next um, next step is to get the i files for the windows installer i'm going to use windows 11 24 s2 so just open the folder and copy it to one of the folder on the drive i'm going to create a new folder windows 11 i'm going to paste the files here and if you are thinking about why it's taking so long to load and this is because when WinP is loading it takes some time in order to load the drivers and other files for WinP to work properly so let's wait for a bit and once it's completed we can continue further um i have copied the files and i need one more file let me i downloaded this from github uh, let me show you the link and install so so this auto annotated file comes from here and this will make uh, the windows optimized while installing and you will have uh, faster uh, responding windows for text less so you can download it from this website github uh, repository and i'll have the link for this also in the video description so while it's loading I copy uh, I also can copying the files. So let me eject the ISO. And we have to share this folder now. Properties, sharing, advanced sharing, share this folder, Missile information, allow. Okay. Now after finishing the share, uh, once the VP has fully loaded, I'll show you the next step. Uh, one more thing you can check the files that were loaded through that stb server here as well it shows you in the which files were gotten from here now this is going to be already loaded now next we have to do is net scan net use uh, so we can use the network share folder as our drive so the server ip is 101 and the installation is in windows 11 I have to enter the username and password. You can also do it with the guest uh, share, but uh, having username and password is much faster. So jet drive. Now next portion is setup. But if you run setup like this, then it will restart the uh, hyperclear physical machine once the installation is done. But we don't want that. So no reboot. We have to add this parameter so that it will not restart once the installation is done it's going to take a few seconds for it to start so let's wait on it mm -hmm. oh i forgot to copy the file here let me go back paste it so this is going to run some uh, commands which will allow the windows to install in unsupported hardware so let me close this and run the setup once more and you'll see what i mean there will be multiple 
command prompt running here. Okay, uh, it went out quick, but uh, you saw a few running. So next, next. And we're not going to use this new installer because this new installer uh, will install and override the previous uh, windows, but we have to use uh, older installer. Let me show you. Uh, it will have an, you will have an option here in a bit. So it, uh, it showed the option, but uh, for some reason it's not showing the old installer. Anyways, let's continue. It doesn't matter. Uh, just create a new partition here. Uh, by it's going to create some required partitions. Okay, so click next, and okay, now it, it's going to install the Windows. You just have to wait for it. It's going to take some time as uh, it's reading from the shared network, sorry, network. So let's just wait for it. We can see the data being read through the network here. As you can see, it's reading and writing onto the disk. And you can see here, it's writing onto the disk. Since we are going over one GPS LAN, uh, this is not going to take long. So let me fast forward this and show you once it's at um, let me fast forward this and show you when the setup has completed. So one thing you may have noticed here that I write speed is uh, quite high, it's going above 100, and this is because Bible is using a virtual Ethernet, which is 10 GBPS. And you can also get similar speed if you have motherboard with 2.5G uh, NIC, and your switch also supports 2.5G operation. So you get uh, 100 plus MBPS megabytes per second read and write speed on those. But currently, we are reaching close to 10 GBPS. So it's going to finish quite soon. And let me pause the video and can come back once this is done. It's almost done. So it's six percent. So the installation is completed. It's going to we'll try and restart the computer next. But since we added the parameter mode input, it's not going to input. As you can see, the setup has completed. Now we have to open registry editor and know the hive from the first installed Windows. That's our C drive. And go to Windows, System32, and then config. System, I'm going to name it SIS. You can name it whatever you want. And now we are going to work in this. First of all, we have to disable basing file. Otherwise, we will encounter base vault in non based area. And that is done in control set, control, system manager, memory management, and basing files. We have to remove the content here and click OK. Now, uh, next up, we have to oh, so next up is we have to set one of the services for the network as uh, uh, so we have to set the start value for a network service for the hyperplane network or your Ethernet, whichever it may be. For real day, it will be RT six forty x sixty four. Um, for Hyper-V, let me check. So I found the name of the service for the Hyper-V network. Uh, for your case, uh, you will have to check with the driver. And you can see it from the 
You can take it from here to then configure details and then check for service so here and we will see that the name of the service that you have to change. So for Hyper-V it's NetVSC and this one and we have to change the value to zero so that we can start at port. Now after setting this value, um, we don't have to do much. So choose the hive and then unload it. And once it's done, exit. So this is going to restart. <coughs> Body traced out. You can change the uh, IPC here to IPC.vfi or you can just choose the from CCB here for the first book. And you can see here is just sand device and button from sand device. And you can see here it's reading. So it's going to take some time for it to find its reading and continue the book. So let's wait for it. So this way you can install Windows to the CCBoot image directly. And uh, it, uh, I think uh, the Hyper-V service is not starting at startup. And that's why it's stuck here right now. But in physical uh, computer, uh, boot will continue and then you will, Windows install will continue and you will be greeted with the OOP or out of the box, box experience. And you just need to write in the name and it will continue the desktop. So once it has released the desktop, uh, what you have to do is uh, turn off the computer and save the super client. And afterwards, update the CCBoot client, and this will install the CCBoot client application to the image. And uh, if you are using CCBoot Classic for Secure Boot, then you have to use the CCBoot Cloud client in order for you to boot in Secure Boot mode. But in some cases, you will experience um, preparing automatic repair. If that happens, then you have to install the Windows while in Secure Boot mode. Otherwise, it will not work. So that's for it for this video. And uh, if you have any question regarding this, um, feel free to mention in the comment below. And I'll have the link to the description. So link for the uh, files that are copied, so copied to the TFT folder in the video description as well, as well as the TFT HTTP server and the unattended file that I used, auto unattended file that I used. And if you if you want the secure boot files and their corresponding certificates, then you can get it from my Patreon base. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Have a good day. See you on the next video.